Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here with us this morning. We've got a big show lined up, but first our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin Highway 77. A uh, good day today. It looks like it's going to be a high of 84, low of 63. And water temperature in the yesterday, remember, it was 77. Today, it bounced back up to 79. But I was looking at last year's chart. It's right on schedule, doing exactly, just replicating what it did last fall this time. So uh, that's, that's really good stuff. And you heard the news yesterday. They're starting to catch some pompano off the pier, which means they're catching them on the west end also. And they headed down to Cape Sand Blast and St. George Island. and. Uh, Next, uh, next two weeks now, we're going to be in this Pompano run, so just be aware of that. River Reading is brought to us by Watson Landings Marina and Dry Storage. It is really a neat place. We're going to talk about that today. I'll uh, we'll have a guest here. We're going to bring it up some. So it uh, looks like our river reading for that Palacicola Bluntstown is a 4.4, and a little bit of drop in it. And a shock to Hatchie at Careville is a 6.2, and uh, it's looking good too. Now, uh, looking at it also, it's, it's dropped on out. It's getting pretty level uh, for the weekend. So it's going to be good fishing. All that water got up in the sloughs. Now it's going to be coming back out. And this weekend, there'll be a lot of a lot of food out there in the river for, uh, for those uh, fish. So you can uh, count on some fish being caught, some nice brimming all being caught this weekend. Let's take a look at our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. We're looking at a high tide at 620 this morning and a low tide at 413. And we're looking at uh, today is October the 7th and pretty good strong tide. We've got a 1.2 foot range. And uh, like we said yesterday, the weekend now is not going to be that big of a strong tide. So uh, be aware of that. Marine forecast north, northeast at about 5 to 10. So looking good today, a 0% chance of rain. So we can get things dried out and uh, enjoy the great outdoors. Let's take a break and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back and welcome Captain Rick Corley. Good morning. Glad to have you. I, we were talking about, I called Rick and uh, we we're talking about this, we had a lot to talk about today, but we we're talking about the, you know losing this ship uh, off the Bahamas and all. I wanted to get an expert opinion. We've been talking about it all morning and they got some good good ideas as to what happened to those folks. Uh, in your opinion now, what, what do you think happened? Well, in his supposition, I don't know because I wasn't there, but uh, they lost power for some reason. We don't know why. Mm -hmm. And those ships, uh, there's you've got a picture of one that's similar. It's not the same. Yeah, this is a cargo ship, and you see yeah. everything stacked up. Yeah, right? they and have you containers. Brought up, you brought up a good point that you got a 140 miles per hour wind against that tall of an. Yeah. And I really hadn't looked at it that yeah, way. Yeah, you can you can have five or six high stacks of like truck bodies. Is mm -hmm. what they are. Uh, containers. They're called CEUs, and they're huge. Mm -hmm. And well, you got that much wind area. And they said they had a 15 degree list in the ship already because of water, and you got 35 foot seas. Well, 35 foot seas with a 700 foot ship, if you're taking them at a 30 degree angle, mm -hmm. it's not so bad. But if you've lost power and you're sitting there broadside to that wind, already got a list, and then the wind's blowing that much more, and those seas hitting you at 35 foot seas, uh, yeah. yeah. You can capsize the ship, and that's very likely what happened. And we were talking about, you know, even with the technology, I mentioned this yesterday, the technology we have today with NOAA and all the weather forecasts and all, it's still a, a call by human. Yep. you got, you got to make yep. that call. And you, you were in that situation in, in the perfect 91, storm, yep. In 91. What yep. happened in that situation? Well, we, what I did was prepare for it ahead of time. I, I had an old habit because uh, I was a pilot, and I used to get up and look at the 300 millibar chart, 30,000 mm -hmm. feet. Well, the upper winds is what steers the weather. It's not the surface winds. They, they, they're they going to do what they're going to do. But the hurricanes mm -hmm. are steered by the jet stream and the upper upper level winds. Mm -hmm. And if you can figure out where your lows are there, that's where the storm's going. Mm -hmm. It's going to fill in that void. Well, when you see that, you try to avoid it. And if you can't, you try to get into the, the quadrant that's the least problem for you, which usually is the, the southwest corner of the storm, because the northeast side is where you're going, you're getting not only the speed of the spin, but the speed of forward movement of the storm. Mm -hmm. So you're reducing it if you're on the back side, as they call it. Well, of course, if you see that thing's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood, I, it's just my 
uh, opinion of why you wouldn't go down and go around below Cuba and come across underneath those islands because Hispanola and Cuba's got big mountains and you yeah. can hide behind. I actually hid behind Hispanola one time with one that was over on the other side in what they call the old Bahama Channel mm -hmm. uh, that's between Cuba and, and, and uh, Haiti and Dominican Republic now. Uh, and, and the Bahama Islands. Well, you either got to go outside the Bahama Islands with a big ship like that or go down through the old Bahama Channel or go below Cuba and, and, mm -hmm. and uh, Hispanola and come into Puerto Rico that way. And uh, if they'd have gone around and under there, they could have hid behind the island and, and stayed out of a lot of the wind. Mm -hmm. But that's a Category 4 storm. And you got to remember, when you go Category 1, 2, yep. 3, you're, nice. you're, it's a geometric progression. You're almost squaring it, the forces that yep. are in it, every stage. And, and that's what I told my students and, and the viewers too. You, you, you know, they left port as a tropical storm, and you used to, you cannot predict how it will intensify. And the same on a summer afternoon thunderstorm. That yep. thing, you know, looks a little bit uh, okay, but then all of a sudden it intensifies. It takes 45 minutes. Yeah. From from the time a, a thunderstorm starts, on the average, 45 minutes, mm -hmm. it's over. So they build quick, and they, they blow out fairly quick. Now, the hurricane's a different story. Well, yeah, and it's such a huge, yeah. it's, huge Well, it's area. a steam engine. As long as it's got warm water, it's going to get yeah. more and more and more. But That's the reason they die when they get in the northern Atlantic, because that cold water mm -hmm. it, it doesn't produce the heat. And y'all were able to, in 91, y'all were able to just uh, stay away? Uh, from, no, uh, just no. I, well, I, I was able to get into St. John's, Newfoundland, and get out of it. In the Newfoundland? Yeah, okay. it, took, it took 70 hours to go 185 miles. Wow, wow. It beat the slop yeah. out of us. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't enjoy it. The, the, you hear some people. Oh, rougher it is, better. I like it. I no, said, you're an idiot. Oh, no, sir. Right. <laughs> we, we, I like it like this tabletop. I don't care what size boat it is. Yeah, rough. It, 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 it is. It's hard on you. It really yeah. is. Yes, it's it just is. Constant, and then uh, you never know what's going to happen next. Uh, and and what I was thinking too, you know, they got all these safety precautions, all the safety suits now. You got these big jumpsuits you can put on. Obviously yeah, they yeah, and Mustang time. suits. Uh, but th the thing is, you got to get in them. You got to have time to do it. You yep. got to have time to do them. And yep. if that ship laid over all of a sudden, uh, they they wouldn't have time. It's like the Edmund Fitzgerald. They couldn't understand why they didn't put out a May Day until after they'd seen the wreck, and then they began to put together the pieces mm -hmm. and reconstruct what had happened. And like in the Edmund Fitzgerald, it blew all the hatches off so quick when that ship dropped off that big sea, and they had a rogue sea hit them in, in, in apparently in, in the Great Lakes, and they have some huge seas there. Mm -hmm. And when it did, it went under. It blowed the hatches off because the water filled, and it was like a submarine. It just went straight to the bottom. And when wow. it hit the bottom, it broke the ship in half. Well, here, if you're laying up on your side, already 15 degrees, and you get a, a big wave hit, and another one hit right behind it, mm -hmm. and the ship fold over, before anybody can put out a May Day, they're gone. And those containers all strapped down and it probably just added a weight to it, probably just went straight well, down. Well, not only that, but they'll turn loose too, but it's too late then. The ship's already reached that point yeah. that it can't come back. And so uh, you don't have time for the May Day or anything, do you? Nah. No, no, they were all scrambling trying to figure out how we get off of here and, and survive. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, the, uh, that's well, putting out a May Day is the last, last of his thoughts. He was trying to get on the outside of that vessel. He won't be trapped inside. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's take a break. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Here with Captain Rick Corley, and we're uh, getting ready. we're going to add some names to the uh, pickle jar. Folks who are really good about sending them in. Uh, let's see, I got it right here. David Anthony Atkinson. We're putting your name in here for the for the drawings coming up soon, and also the the weekly drawings too. And uh, we were talking also. Let me, let's look at a couple of pictures while we got them out here. Uh, uh oh, this is not the one I want to look at. Uh, let me get uh, Jeff. I hit the wrong one. Uh, we want to look at this one right here. How about a dove shoot up there in Washington County? Chad Taylor sent this, and you know every year they have this big, they have this big dove shoot up there. And, and he was telling me uh, this time they got a uh, 51 dove, and they, the dove flew later. Uh, that's a nice farm up there. Uh, Chad Taylor and the family and the friends up there, and uh, they really enjoy doing it. So I'm glad to see. This is what we're talking about: a family getting out and enjoying it. Okay, good job, and Chad. Thanks for sending that. Let's put the dates up now for dove season. This first phase is you know, September 26th through October the 26th. And phase two uh, is November the 14th through December the 7th. Now a lot of people have good luck on that second phase. And the third phase is uh, just, we, I don't know why they close it three or four days. That's, that's strange. I, I, but anyway, <laughs> uh, 
there, there's your shooting hours also, noon to sunset, and then two to three. And then we got uh, got one more picture here, Chris Clark, his daughter. Uh, redfish. Yeah, nice redfish there. Yeah. Good job, Chris, uh, taking those kids fishing and all. Okay, and we're talking about fishing and boats and all, and one of the things, too, uh, one of our new sponsors, thanks to Rick Corder for helping get the sponsor here, Watson Landing Marina uh, and Dry Storage. Yes. And uh, Mike Hobbs and those folks, I, I went over there last week, and I was impressed with that that area. It's a nice it's a nice setup, and, and the, the, the one thing that I like is the way the bunks are done in the Dry Storage Barn, a full support uh, bunks. Mm -hmm. They're not short pieces. They're, they're full length of the boat. The other thing is that's a great hurricane hole. If it's bad mm -hmm. weather, you're back in there. It, 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 it's you know, high. Looking right. at, at the history, the, the nautical history of this area in the early days, that's one of the places where the yep. old, the, and you, you know that, they, they yeah. went over there to Watson's Bayou. Yep, anchored up in there. Anchored up in there when a hurricane was coming. That was, that was just a natural, safe storage. Uh, now, it, what impresses me that the building is huge and all, well, you know, uh, you put a boat in dry storage and, and uh, put a boat outside, the same boat, and in five years, look at those boats. And oh. That one in dry storage looks... Well, Let you, me tell you, that's... Uh, no. Uh, the the yeah. UV rays are just... I hate fiberglass. It, it beats it up. Uh, you don't... It, and think about this, folks. If you don't put one in dry storage, when it comes time to re-gel coat or all grip paint or whatever, mm -hmm. you're looking at about 215 to $250 a linear foot mm -hmm. to redo that boat. Mm -hmm. And anybody that's gonna buy it's gonna look at it and that's the first thing's going through their head mm -hmm. is, ooh, we gotta do this. Uh -huh. So you're gonna lose that much money on your resale of your boat if you don't. Uh, no, uh, dry stacking anywhere is, is worth the money mm -hmm. because it's the peace of mind in bad weather, but the other thing is your boat just, it fares a lot better in dry storage. Yeah, and another thing they got going for them, they're the only uh, dry storage, big dry storage on this side of the Hathaway Bridge, yes. on a big marina yep. on this side of the Hathaway Bridge, and it, what, what's good about that, you know, you can come down, you, you got family that lives out of town or something, want to keep a boat down here, and they come yeah. down to 231, and just keep coming well, on right Well, not now. only that, but a lot of your locals like that because they live closer here. Oh, yeah. Uh, where uh, the ones in Grand Lagoon and places like that, they're good facility, but they, they, uh, they're geared traffic. towards the tourists. And especially yeah. on holidays. And all. Yeah. And everybody wants to go out on July 4th and all. Man, that traffic, yeah. we, we know that. Uh, uh, and now Mike's got a special on right now, too, by the way. In 18 to 23 foot. He's $10 a foot now. That, that's and that's a, for yeah. the rest, of, I think it's till the end of the year. Mm hmm and uh, we're going to get Mike on in the next month or so. We, we're glad to have them a sponsor. But it's just, you know, right, right up our alley is an outdoor show. Uh, you know, taking care of your boat, being able to launch it, and uh, and you put it right there, and it's got a big old forklift, and just sit it out there for you. All you do is just jump on the boat. Yep. And, and uh, we're, we're glad to have them. And one thing I noticed, too, he had it. He had a French drain and that big building. It all, you know, it, it's really uh, well well done as far as environmental yes. sound. Yes. And I'm so glad. You know, originally uh, they were going to put a long time ago. Well, not a long time ago. Back before the uh, bottom fell out, they're going to put some condos there. Right. And uh, I'm glad it ended up. Uh, we're going to have boats there now. Yep. And, and, it's uh, it's it's better for the area. It's better for the people. Mm -hmm. And of course. What, we're constantly running out of, of places to put boats. So. Well, well, they don't make that water for the <coughs> property anymore. No. And uh, that, that's, that's valuable right there. So it's, it's like two minutes uh, east of uh, Harrison Avenue. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, Will Rogers said, buy, buy land, they're not making any more of it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, you know, talking about protecting the boat, a lot of people have smaller boats and don't need dry storage, like little 16-footers and all. And, uh, put, uh, I, I've seen uh, people put blue tarps on them and canvas yeah. tarps. And uh, what? What's the best, in your opinion? Of the, uh, well, you got to remember, it still gets hot, and that's another thing. You, you, you've got some of these boats that's got liners inside mm -hmm. the cabin, yeah. and you get them that hot, and next thing you know, your liner's hanging down because it the deteriorates heat. the glue and the heat and all, just like in a car. Mm -hmm. uh, i got a carport over my cars. Well, there's a reason. I don't want to have to repaint my cars, and I don't want my headliner to have to be redone, and by having my carport, when my car's under, I don't have that because they stay cooler. Well, even in that building, uh, there there's enough ventilation there between the roof of the building and the boats that you don't have that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, one thing you definitely don't want to put the blue tarps on on uh, on boats or any, anything outdoor. I mean, they're temporarily, you know, for a yeah. couple of days, or whatever. They're good. In fact, I had my my camping trailer. I had threw, threw one over because I was under a pine tree, 
Uh, Keeps it, it, it on. It was hot and it was dripping off the pine tree. I put it up temporarily. And my neighbor noticed it and he told me right away, I, I, that's a good neighbor when they say, you know, come checking on you. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're talking about covers and all these, these canvas covers, though, those breathable breathable covers are the best mm -hmm. thing you can yes. put on there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, let's, uh, we, right here, we're at a good point to take a break. Let's take our final break and we'll be right back with Rick. All right, welcome back. Sitting with Captain Rick Corey talking about boats. He's our boat expert for Panhandle Outdoors. Let's look at our fishing game for today. Brought to us, our time brought to us by Mark Coward of Counts Real Estate. And we're looking at our times from 8.45 to 10.45 this morning and this evening from 9.07 to 11.07. Appreciate Mark and Michael who finished in the top 10 again uh, this past weekend at the Emerald Coast Redfish. That was the final Redfish uh, tournament for the season. So next year, go and make plans to, to enter that Emerald Coast Redfish Club. They're a bunch of good guys, they enjoy fishing, and uh, who knows, they may catch another tagged redfish, and we hope they're registered. Uh, we had some folks catch a tagged redfish, but they hadn't registered, pre-registered, mm -hmm. and they lost out on a $40,000 boat. Ow. Well, yeah, it was just a story our, our viewers well know about it. Quick email, we record this show every morning and watch it each evening. Always looking for new information on how to catch a big one. Thank you for all you do, please enter. Our name in weekly drawing for your prize uh, prize giveaway, uh, Betty Brooks Brown, Panama City Beach. Uh, got took care of that, and also uh, you know a lot of folks record it now and then watch it in the evening, but and a lot of folks are watching it right now as, as you know drinking a cup of coffee. But all that being said, we appreciate every one of y'all. We appreciate y'all supporting our sponsors and talking about we're, we're talking about off the air about why that that EPIRB. Why in the world wouldn't that EPIRB have gone off in this situation? Uh, what do you think might have happened? It it could have gone off, gotten damaged. Yeah. yeah you know, and that kind of wind, something breaks loose and hits it, can knock it out. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. you're 140 mile on a wind's a lot of force. Yeah, you know, I said it went off. They, they said it got one ping from it and then it just quit. So if uh, it got tangled up with the ship and the ship mm -hmm. went down and pulled it down far enough, of course, yeah, it could have, it, yeah, yeah. It, they're designed to break loose, float up, and go off. And if it get deep enough, yeah, uh, it just obviously yeah, didn't, didn't it doesn't do work. Uh, one of the things, too, uh, we're, we're talking also about you know the dry storage, how good it is for a boat and all that. But we're talking about boats, the capacity plates, and getting back to smaller boats now. Yes. A lot of times people overlook those, those capacity plates by federal law have to be attached to the. They boat. have to be attached, and there's one other thing. If you got, if it says, for example, it's a 40 horse motor mm -hmm. is the maximum, mm -hmm. and you put a 50 horsepower motor on that boat, you don't have insurance. Uh huh. If you exceed the the capacity plate, you have voided your insurance. Yeah, and, and also uh, it leaves you liable too if something would happen if you were. Yes, sir. And so uh, you know, be aware of that. Look at on capacity plate. Make sure that you're you know, if you get it from a dealer, you know, like Horse Marine and all, they're going to have it all set up for you, and you're going to mm -hmm. be in good shape there. But a lot of times we buy used boats, and and you know, things been swapped around and yep. all. And, and another thing too, we got to check the steering cable. We we'll talked about that before. Oh yes, yes, because you know it's like anything else, and if you lose that. <laughs> It can get exciting quick because that engine's not going to stay straight. It's going to turn. As soon mm -hmm. as you brake cable, it, it, it'll turn because the propeller turns one way and you have what they call a P-factor because one blade is pulling a little stronger than the other because of the way it's designed. Mm -hmm. And that motor will eventually will turn that direction. And when it does, you can get thrown out of a boat real quick. Yeah. And uh, our fuel tanks, the built-in fuel tanks, uh, yep. they, they're, they're, you know, a lot of times they're going to get moisture in them. And it, you gotta check you need to stay bill in your gas. Okay. Uh, especially, and folks, please, if you can, don't use the ethanol. It's terrible on outboard motors mm -hmm. and engines. Uh, if you're using it enough, like in a car, that's a different story. But when it sits, it breaks right. down and it gets water. That alcohol, well, you know, mm -hmm. no. None of the marinas around here sell ethanol fuel. So buy you buy your boat fuel at the marina. Mm -hmm. It's more expensive as far as the price of gas. But the cost that you save on having to pay a mechanic to redo that engine, mm -hmm. you come out. You're, you're better off to buy your fuel that is designed for your boat. And, and also, we're, we're in a situation where we're, this fall, it's fall, and so a lot of people are using boats in the fall. Yeah. We're getting right on the verge of winterizing our boats. And you go to yeah. December and January, the boats are used less than any time of the year. And yep. Red November, December, January. And you want to make sure you get either get all the water out or put a little antifreeze in whatever water's left. If you're a big boat, uh, 
a lot of times uh, things like the toilets and so on, mm -hmm. uh, if you don't keep them uh, a little bit of heat in them, uh, if you got you know engine rooms, I like to, to some of them have heaters in them that are designed, but some don't. If you don't, mm -hmm. put your hundred watt light bulb in there on an extension cord or something. Uh, okay, Rick. One quick, of, one more quick question. Now, if you're out there in, in the Gulf and 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 you do have say some kind of a really bad situation where your boat starts taking on water, what what's the best thing to do? Get your life jacket on first. Get your life jacket on first. Yeah. Second thing is make a call to the Coast Guard. And a lot of people carry a cell phone. That's fine. But a cell phone, you're talking to yeah, one can. person. Yeah, you if can. you go on a VHF radio, you're talking to everybody in 30 miles. Yeah. And, and that cell phone is not going to reach a lot of, no. you know, this weekend. Or, yeah, you know, exactly. So and then, you know, yeah. don't put out a mayday if you don't think you're going to sink, but put mm -hmm. out a, what they call a pon pon. Uh, it's P-A-N-P-A-N, -P -A -N, pon pon. It's French. It, it, it means that I've got a problem. It has not become life-threatening or property-threatening yet, but it is a problem, and it could change to a mayday. Mm -hmm. And that's that's kind of uh, putting them on guard. And uh, tell them what your problem is, where you're at, the description of your boat, mm -hmm. and the number of people on board. That's real important. So they know what assets to bring. The Coast Guard, they're not mind readers. So if, if you've got a big boat and a lot of people, they don't want to come out there in, in one of those ribs or something like that. They mm -hmm. want to come in a big enough vessel they can take all the people off. And it's almost entertaining when you're out there on Saturdays listening to the, uh, to the every time we're out there, if there's some boat in distress, they'll call it some catamaran or something in distress in yes. Mobile Bay or, or Apalachicola yep. Bay, and they'll be calling, and the uh, Coast Guard will be asking, asking these same questions. Exactly. How many people on board? I said, i got to know that, yeah. how to yep. react. So. And but, where are you at? And you should know where you're at. In other words, yeah. you can't say I'm over here. I'm that, here. that don't work, you know. I'm, I'm out here in the Gulf. Right, <laughs> I'm in the Gulf. Well, where are you at in the Gulf, you know? If you know your latitude, longitude, yeah. give them that. If you don't know your latitude, longitude, how far are you from the closest landmark? Yeah. Uh, like, if you're out there uh, scalloping off Davis Point, yeah. you should know what Davis Point and, is. And be prepared. Yeah. All right, got to go, buddy. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Always be prepared. Uh, today, you do something good for your fellow man. You have a great day, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle on Tours with Winston Chester. Panhandle on Tours features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle on Tours.